Hi everybody, Scott here, and in this episode of Let's Open, I'm looking at two smartwatches which aren't all that smart. Will these cheap watches be able to compete with the current tech, or will this video just bore the crap out of you? I'll test them and then open them both up to find out what makes them tick. And probably use that pun again. Hmm. You know what, I don't feel, uh, I don't feel connected enough. I mean, glasses, one smartwatch, uh, two phones, it's not really enough, is it? I have just the thing, though. Ah. Ah, yes. There we go. Now I feel connected. Yeah. I mean, in all honesty, I could never bring myself to wear glass in public too much, uh, especially after they started calling everyone wears it glass holes. But a smartwatch is an understated way to get notifications and sort of uh, keep in touch without having to take your phone out of your pocket every five seconds. So I always wear a smartwatch and it got me thinking uh, as I was looking at AliExpress, what can you get out there that's much cheaper than you know the higher end of the smartwatches? Uh, this is an old Moto 360, not really high end anymore, but it still works great for me. On the other hand, uh, this I think was $150 when I finally bought it. But here we have the Kenshin Da smartwatch, and this has a little bit of a party trick to it. It's not just a smartwatch, it's also a phone. So it's kind of a competitor for uh, the Samsung Gear, or whichever one has the, has the uh, phone in it. So this will take a SIM card. Actually, I think it takes two SIM cards, which is kind of impressive for a watch. Um, this one right here is just a regular smartwatch, which connects via Bluetooth. This was 30 bucks and this was 50 bucks. So for an extra 20 bucks, I mean, it seems like a good deal to have a watch that will actually connect to the internet without a phone. And it even has a uh, physical keypad, which seems grossly unnecessary because all it has are numeric buttons and a D-pad, which if you have a touch screen, I don't see how that matters. And it's definitely a touch screen. So a little bit weird. Now, one thing I'm gonna do for this video is I'm going to uh, open these up, show them to you, get them set up so you can see what that's all about. And then I'm gonna wear them both, not at the same time, one at a time, for a week each. And this way I'll kinda of get an idea of what, it is to, what it's like to live with these watches. Because with something like a smart watch, I mean, unless it's utter crap where you take it out of the box and it practically falls apart and doesn't work at all, you don't really know how good or bad it is till you really try it. So let's look at this one first. This is just the standard smart watch without the uh, ability to take a SIM card. And it says Healthy Life Partner U80 Smartwatch. Bluetooth Watch International. I ordered this in red, and sometimes uh, things from AliExpress don't come exactly as you ordered them, but it does look like it is indeed red. And there it is. It's not exactly the most handsome of watches, and it's quite thick. I mean, it's uh, a little bit thicker than my Moto 360, which is already pretty thick. And, uh, but it's made of cheap plastic, unlike this, which has an aluminum bezel. I mean, I'm not really comparing these two watches because of course this one's far higher end and far more expensive than this. Um, you know, this was like 300 at launch and this is $30 at launch. So take off a little plastic uh, protective covering. And of course it left some sticky residue on there. Ooh, sticky residue across the whole face of the watch. All right, now that that's been cleaned off as best as possible. Um, it has a uh, rubbery sort of band similar to the original Pebble. This seems a little more flexible, a little like springier, and definitely more elastic. Um, let's see if, it's, if it actually stays on the watch. Yeah, I mean, reasonable amount of force. It's not coming off. That's cool. I don't want to break it just yet. Uh, after I wear it for a week and tell you what that was like, I'm going to do a complete uh, disassembly of this. Probably uh, breaking it in the process because... Um, yeah, it looks, oh, there's more uh, protective stuff on the back, which did not leave a sticky residue. Fantastic. Um, unlike the Pebble or the Moto, which have, you know, different uh, fancy sort of proprietary charging methods, actually the uh, Moto has uh, inductive charging, but this just uses a typical uh, micro USB connector, which goes into the side of the watch under this flap right here. And now I wonder if this shipped with a charge before I plug it in. I just kind of want to see how that fits. I mean, this is a very, ooh, not a very good feel to that. I don't know if it's the connector on this cable or if it's the actual jack, but it feels rough going in there. And this cable is obviously very cheap. It's very thin, flimsy feeling. Um, 
But yeah, let me power it on before I plug it in to see if I get an idea of charge. I'm gonna let that charge and while I do, so this took a while to get here. This came directly from China. Um, the Orico USB charger was the only thing that I that came straight from the United States uh, that I've ordered from AliExpress. Uh, I ordered it in red, came that way. Ordered it on uh, February 26th, got here March 14th. So that's uh, about two and a half weeks, which really isn't bad. Now, one of the major selling points, they cannot stress this enough, is that this watch will remind you, the user, to drink water. In case you forget, in case you don't remember what thirst feels like, drink plenty of water to remind. Worn in the work of busy people, drink water from time to time. Yep, makes about as much sense as uh, most stuff on AliExpress. Um, quick review of the features. This thing's supposed to have a capacitive touchscreen. I guess it probably does. It doesn't feel like it's uh, resistive or thin film or whatever the hell. Uh, ringing reminder when you receive a call. Ringing once your mobile phone disconnected, which seems annoying. Uh, display the number of names of incoming calls. All the stuff you'd usually expect. Stopwatch. Play music from your phone. You could sync your uh, phone book, SMS, and call history. I don't know why you'd want to sync that to your phone. Why would you need that information separately from your phone? Anyway, um, anti-lost alarm function. The anti-lost alarm function is when cell phone left watch alarm automatically after a certain distance to avoid lose the phones. So I guess if you, if you move the watch a certain distance away from the phone, one or both of them will sound an alarm. I guess that's good. Um, you can take a photo remotely, only on Android phones. It has a passometer. I'm assuming they mean pedometer? What the hell's a passometer? a photograph, a rest alarm, a drink reminder, and a sleep monitor. I'm assuming the sleep monitor is just heart rate monitoring, galvanic skin response, I don't know. It's got a metal plate on the back, so I'm assuming that has something to do with what it's monitoring. Talk time about three hours, so I guess it's like as a speakerphone. This definitely does not take a SIM, so I don't know why this talk time, I didn't, it did not say it's a speakerphone. So yeah, that's the boring particulars on that watch. In fact, uh, one thing I did want to check was I have a little USB power meter here, which I meant to plug in line with this thing earlier, just to see what kind of current it's taking when it's charging. This is giving off 5.24 volts, which is a little high, but not terribly high. And this is drawing 0.48 amps right now, just charging. So I'm gonna see if I can turn it on. Oh, it made a noise. Indeed, it did make a noise. And uh, here's a quick walkthrough of the menus. I mean, there's really not much terribly interesting in here. It's kind of what you would expect from a shitty smartwatch where they try to play up some features that you don't really need and they don't have some features that you do need. Uh, I did find my phone in the Bluetooth menu, so that's cool, but it's kind of a button masher. I mean, this watch face is probably about as big as any other watch face, but uh, you can see here, trying to dial a number, it's really hard to hit the exact center of one of these keys. Uh, maybe it's because I'm using my big fat thumbs, but I finally got the number entered and just out of curiosity I tried and it would not uh, dial on my phone. So I went into the phone book and it asked if I wanted to disconnect Bluetooth music, which is a little weird because I didn't know I was connected to Bluetooth music and why would I need to disconnect from that to use my phone book. And then it keeps bothering me to install the Messenger app. Now this watch needs a special app to work with your phone, it doesn't use Android Wear or anything like that, which is fine in theory, and here I'm trying to play some music, and even though it thinks Bluetooth music is apparently connected, it doesn't work. We'll go through the app later, and the app just plain doesn't work. And that's one of the major problems with this watch, and here they give you a bunch of options on how to download the app, you can do it through Google Play, uh, just scan the QR code, and that did in fact take me to the proper place. Uh, Baidu Cloud, which I'm not going to use, and Android 5.0, which is kind of weird because the Google Play version should theoretically support whatever version of Android I'm running, which happens to be 6, and it did show up and install for my phone. So, uh, that's kind of weird. Um, you can see I'm kind of scrolling up and down on those settings really randomly, and it's because it does not have a good tactile feel at all. Uh, it's got volume settings for ringtone, multimedia, I'm not really sure uh, what the multimedia is going to be because this does not have a built-in speaker aside from the, you know, whatever makes the initial startup noise, which sounds terrible. I mean, I couldn't play music through that thing, so I don't know if this supports a Bluetooth headset, but we'll find out. 
Uh, the calculator actually wasn't too bad. It was actually better than the dialer for entering numbers. I was actually trying to enter 555 divided by 666. Uh, it's got a stopwatch function, which is just fine. It does what a stopwatch does. Um, nothing to report there, really. Uh, and so, yeah, there's really not much you can do without the app being installed. So that's it on this watch for now. So this guy is the one that takes the SIM. And you might have noticed at the beginning of the video I had this sitting next to me. Um, it's an H2O wireless SIM. H2O wireless is a really shitty carrier. They're not actually a carrier. They're just um, a virtual, virtual carrier in that they lease uh, time on AT&T's network. So basically, if you make calls with H2O, you're making it on AT&T's network. But if you need customer support or anything like that or have billing issues, you have to deal with their customer support people and all the reviews say that is absolute dick. So I don't use H2O wireless for myself, but they are cheap. It's easy to refill. This card cost uh, one penny shipped from Amazon for just the uh, SIM. Otherwise, if you order it directly from H2O, they charge you. The SIM is free, but they charge you $10 for shipping at cheapest, which is ridiculous. So I actually already tested this and activated it in a different phone, but I'll get it out so we can set it up with this watch. God damn, this thing is big. Holy crap. Okay, I mean, I'm gonna hold it up here and then to this camera. I mean, you really have to see this. Uh, speaking of cameras, it looks like there's a camera right there on the side that faces, oh, well, most people wear their watch on their left hand, so I'm, uh, I'm left-handed. So yeah, the camera would point out that way. I guess you really gotta do like, get your wrist out of the way because the camera's pretty low down to your wrist. Um, kind of bizarre. And also it's really only good for right-handed people. Uh, on the, um, what is it, the Samsung, the camera's in the front, which makes a lot more sense to me. Also for like stealthily taking pictures, you can just pretend to be on your watch, but no matter. I mean, not a big deal. I'm not buying this for stealth photographing abilities, but let's just compare the sizes uh, side by side red watch to the white watch. I mean, tremendous difference. And the red one's already slightly thicker and about this, I mean, square instead of uh, round. So roughly the same dimensions as the Moto 360. But this just dwarfs it. I mean, it's just, it's twice as thick as the 360. It, it's just tremendous. Um, slides up and down. That's actually, wow. That is, I, I mean, I wish I could let you feel this, but that is a very nice sliding action. It just sort of springs into place. Um, actually, has a bit of a feel of quality to that. Um, this metal part here around the edge, though, that's just uh, plastic with a metal coating. Um, the whole thing's plastic. The watch band is uh, not quite as, as elastic or floppy as the uh, red watch over here. I forgot the brand names. I mean, who cares? This is the U watch, and this is the Kenshin Da. Whatever, I'm sure they sell them under various different names. Now, I wonder if this one shipped with the charge. This also has a micro USB connector. And uh, I think I said it before, but this one was 50 bucks. So a little bit more. Um, let's see where the SIM goes in first. Okay, the back pries off really easily. I mean, like, shockingly easily. I thought I was gonna have to get a screwdriver, but I just put my thumbnail under the edge and it wasn't even clipped on that corner. And it just pops right off. Uh, so you can see it has, uh, let me get the uh, Sony camera in here, hopefully we get a good shot of this. Um, it has two SIM card slots, SIM 2 and SIM 1. It also has a, it says T, so I'm assuming that's a TF card slot, not a, uh, uh, not an SD card slot. But still, pretty cool. Um, I think it, ha it looks like it has a separate battery. Okay, this one, unlike the Red Watch, comes with a charger, European style. Now the seller was kind enough to include a North American to European uh, adapter in the box. So I'm gonna assume this is uh, 100 to 240 volts, yep, 50, 60 hertz, output five volts, 500 milliamps. So standard USB charging. Ooh, you know, <laughs> shockingly, I didn't read a terribly large amount about these before I bought them because I was just really curious to see what I'd get. And this actually comes with a Bluetooth earpiece. I'm sure not a very good quality Bluetooth earpiece, but still, I'm kind of impressed that they bothered. Uh, let's see, we got, oh, uh, this is an ear clip for the Bluetooth uh, earpiece. 
Okay, lithium ion battery. It says 3.7 volts, 900 milliamp hours. I'm a little dubious of the 900 milliamp hours because this battery weighs almost nothing and it's very small. Um, yeah, it says charging limited voltage 4.2 and it looks like it has that little uh, plastic piece on top of here that probably hides a circuit board. So it probably has a uh, charge current and overcharge and under uh, and over um, discharge limiting. So that's kind of cool. What else do we have in the box? We have a charging cable for the uh, Bluetooth earpiece, which is standard USB type A male connector to a wee little tiny barrel plug style connector. Um, let's see if, the, uh, if I can get a good shot of this. So there's a little port on the back here and that of course just jams right into there. Not even very deeply. That's about as deep as it goes really did not think that this watch, which I thought would be, you know, not tiny, but somewhat small, I did not think it would take two full-size SIM cards. That's, that's just madness right there. I figured I'd give you a close-up look at the back of the watch. Uh, the SIM card goes in much as you'd expect. There's a little notch on the uh, inside of the watch that lines up with the notch on the SIM card. It goes right like that. Second SIM would go in the same way if I had one. An SD card goes right into that T slot, which like I said, I think is for TF, and it just slips right in. It doesn't slip in very tightly. Um, I'd imagine if you're wearing this and it gets banged around, uh, that could come loose. So, battery slides in just as you expect, with, as with any cell phone or anything. And the cover, uh, you got to make sure it's lined up correctly. It's actually biased to only go on one way, and it's kind of a pain in the ass to get lined up, but there it is. And now let's start up the watch. Uh, just like the red watch, it's going to play a nice little musical tune to get you in the mood for watch wearing, I suppose. So uh, here it is. You know, I mean, I like the fact they went to the effort. Um, every time it starts up, uh, if the battery's been pulled or it dies, it asks for a date and time. It doesn't get it from the cellular network. I don't know why. It'll just sit like that for a... Uh, forever even though it's connected so first thing I'm going to show is the multimedia section which I'm going to control with the d-pad down there and the camera and is of course nothing to write home about but let's look at some images that I shot using a real DSLR and the image quality is of course poor I think this has a 240 by 320 screen and by default it takes pictures in that resolution and video that's the maximum resolution for video so Overall, it's pretty poor, but remember, this only has 32 megabytes of RAM. I mean, this is running a very lightweight OS. And you can see you can browse the details of the pictures. It's really not all a bad system overall to navigate. Um, now I'll give you some examples of audio. Um, let's just have a listen. Well, I mean, what do you expect? It's a tiny little speaker. I mean, it's going to sound tinny, it's going to sound awful, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. And of course, you could connect a Bluetooth headset to this or use a little earpiece and it would probably sound a lot better. It's not a bad interface overall. Uh, here I'm trying to play some video. I loaded a few different formats of video on here, a few different codecs and containers. Didn't want to play any of them. Turns out the only thing it seems to want to play is 3GP video, which is like the old school cell phone standard from like I don't know, early 2000s. And here's a video of me doing a previous video, which uh, was the cylindrical computer. And uh, you can see on the watch, it looks terrible. But it's better than a watch that doesn't play video. And again, with 32 megs of RAM, this is actually kind of impressive. Uh, here's the camera. Uh, as you can see, also nothing to write home about. Um, 240 by 320. It does support high resolutions, but it seems to just upscale the really low resolution sensor. Um, you should be able to record by hitting that button there, or the, uh, the on-screen button, but I wouldn't respond to my thumb for whatever reason, so you hit the OK button and starts recording. This is it recording video. Uh, again, low bitrate, low resolution, lo low frame rate, it just looks awful. 
And uh, it does have the advantage, though, of a decent menu system again, where you can go in and actually manipulate the video and play back and do all sorts of other stuff. And here's me on the watch. Uh, not so great, right? Uh, compared to, let's say, this. But, I mean, I guess this will do if you're just trying to get some, uh, you know, clandestine video of someone just uh, very subtly. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it works. All right, so I got my phone. Now let's try, I'm gonna call the watch first. So I don't have to type in the freaking phone number on the watch, or it's gonna be really tiny. Nope, it's ringing. No! Oh. Okay, so the watch definitely has a microphone in it. And does it have a speaker? Oh. It's got, it's got a tiny little speaker at the very top, which is, I'm going to speak quietly and away from my microphone so you hear it mostly through the speaker. But this is what it sounds like when doves cry. This is actually usable as a phone. Hmm. So, yeah, this is actually uh, rather cool. Um, it's not very good. I should point that out. Uh, da -da -da. So it's a 1.44 inch screen. So this is where the specs got me as far as like I know me knowing it's gonna be really shitty. Uh, this has 32 megabytes of RAM. That's right, 32 megabytes. Uh, I'm saying it like that because that's very um, 1992 of them, 1994 of them. No, probably 96, but whatever. Point is, that's like uh, a computer 20 years ago. Uh, 32 meg ROM. <laughs> Camera is 0 0.08 megapixels. That's less than a tenth of a megapixel. That's just uh, horrible. Uh, battery 300 milliamp hour for Nokia BL5V. So is this compatible with a Nokia battery style? Um, and it says, this says, like I said, this is 900 milliamp hour. And here it says 300 milliamp hour. I would say based on the size and weight of this battery, 300 milliamp hour is probably closer to accurate. Um, it's still maybe a little optimistic. So yeah, um, not much else to say about it. Uh, it's very crappy. All right, now I just wanna be clear. When I say this is crappy, I don't mean it's poorly designed. I like the design of this watch. It's just, it's a bit long in the tooth. I think it's past its prime. I did wanna show you this game it has built in. Uh, not that exciting a game, but, um, entertaining enough. You basically push boxes into balls, or bombs, and, uh, you just try to clear all the bombs off the board. You can also, of course, send text messages using the watch. Uh, it's not easy, though, because it uses multi-tap text entry. Uh, you know, the really old-fashioned type. It doesn't even have predictive text. You just have to multi-tap each numeric button to get the letter you want. Um, instead of doing that, I went in to see if there were any shortcuts, and it said, add fizz. And it turns out fizz, er, er, they're emoticons. Um, I don't know if this phone predates the word emoticons, or if that's just what they wanted to call it, but I did send a text message, and eventually uh, it did come through to my phone, and it did send, so at least it's useful for that. Uh, otherwise, we got an internet browser. That's the only really other thing of interest on here. However, it's not really usable with modern web pages. Uh, maybe with like GeoCities sites from back in the day it would work, but you can see with Google it just said dial failed. Uh, maybe that was something with the cell provider, but um, here I've sped up the footage a lot because the text entry is just that slow. Uh, my own website will not load. I waited quite a long time, and I tried Amazon just for the fun of it, and Amazon eventually did load. Uh, it took quite a few minutes, but I got this. And scrolling through, you can see it's all text, uh, none of the images loaded. So, uh, and there's probably no JavaScript on this either. So you're not really gonna be able to do too much, but I just wanted to show that it will render a web page at least in some basic way. Though eventually it did say uh, not enough memory. Yeah, that's because that's 32 megs of RAM and this is a modern website. So uh, yeah, take it for what it is. All right, so now all that remains is to wear these two watches for a week each and see how it goes. Um, well, and then I'm gonna take them apart. Uh, we'll see what's inside of them and what, what makes them tick.
because they don't actually tick. It's uh, not a pun. It's just stupid. Well, you know what they say about good intentions. I had every intention of wearing both of these watches for a week each, and it's actually been more than two weeks since I shot that first part of the video. Um, it's not that I didn't want to wear them, it's just that I didn't see any point. Uh, the red watch would not pair in any useful way with my phones. It would pair in the sense that it would connect via Bluetooth and uh, the phone would see the watch and vice versa, but I couldn't get the app to run. Uh, I tried it on Android 6.0, Android 4, and uh, even a Nokia smartphone from 1998, and it wouldn't work with any of them. Um, this guy, you know, at first I thought it was a smart watch when I bought it, um, and it is, I guess, in the sense that it's kind of smart and has some functions that you'd expect, but it does not pair with a phone. It is a phone. And the usefulness there is really limited because it doesn't receive email. You can't run GroupMe, you can't run any kind of other chat program. There's no Skype, of course. There's no YouTube app. There's no, well, I mean, it goes on and on. So anything that you'd want to do on a normal phone, you can't do with this watch. Um, it is good for audio. Like, it's, it has a decent MP3 player with good audio quality over Bluetooth headphones. I did try that out. And it would be a great like emergency watch. Uh, if you're going out jogging or if you're doing exercise of some kind, which I don't usually do, but uh, it would be good to wear that with a Bluetooth headset. You have all your music and this way, if you run into some kind of emergency, if you have a SIM card in here, it works as a phone and that's great. So pretty much all that's left to do with these two is take them apart and see what's inside because uh, I'm curious. And if you are too, then keep watching the video. So let's start with the white watch. Um, we already saw the battery and all that crap coming out. Nothing exciting there. Now, I fully expect that once I take these apart, I'm not going to put them back together. Uh, either because I'm going to lose some pieces or because I'm not going to feel like it. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. Alright, well, easy enough to take the band off. Um, there's just a pin in there like... Most other watches, you slide it to the side and it opens up. Uh, it's spring-loaded. So we'll get that out of the way. Okay, so this seems to be composed of two pieces. Uh, there's a seam that runs right along here. Yeah, up into the watch, uh, up into the band area, and then back around and down. So hopefully, with a little bit of prying, although it looks like it might be welded, um, I'm not sure if that's what these are. Maybe these are little plastic inserts covering screws. Ah, they're little plastic inserts covering screws. That one has the letter K underneath it. That's kind of weird. Oops, well I lost that. I don't care if I lose these actually, even if I do put the watch back together. These are just, uh, these are not necessary for its function. In fact, I don't know why they covered the screws up here. I guess just for looks, because it's not like it's waterproof or even water resistant anyhow. All right, so now we got some wee, wee little screws. Keep sticking my big fat head into the shot. My apologies for that. I think that K might just be so they know you voided the warranty by opening it up, because I think it, it's probably just a sticker. Yeah, it's just a little sticker. Let me see if I can just poke through it and unscrew it that way. Yep. All right, and all the screws are identical, so that's cool. Um, but it's not coming apart immediately, so it probably does snap together as well. Oh. Ah, wow. Okay. That was actually pretty easy to take apart. I'm kind of surprised. Um, is this gonna, oh, and that's just gonna separate. Wow, this is uh, a lot easier to disassemble than I thought, at least it's on the back here. Okay, so we've got uh, two very small wires, red and black in there, and those connect to, I believe that's the microphone. And uh, I'm gonna try not to break them. Let me see if I could, just slide the microphone out. Yeah, oh, brilliant. Yeah, the microphone just keyed into a little slot right in there. And then on the other side, that's the camera. And is that just gonna slide out? Oh yeah. Well, would you look at that? 
And this, I believe, uh, this loose wire here is probably the antenna. Okay, so yeah, the little camera just slid in right under that, uh, not a lens, but that little co uh, clear cover. And the microphone slid in right under there. And here we have the mic likewise and the camera. So this is just a little circuit board by itself. I, uh, how is this? Oh, I, I didn't even notice it. And then there's a, to connect the screen, there's a, I actually don't know what kind of connector that's called, but it's basically just uh, slides in face to face to meet with this connector there. I'll show some close up pictures of those, why not? And of course the buttons on the uh, keypad, which should come out. Let's see, do you want to come out? Yeah, ah, just pops right out. Interestingly, this is not how I expected the keypad to work. Usually they have a bit of conductive material on top of these pads so that uh, when you press the buttons, it closes a circuit. But instead, these are the actual buttons on here. Um, they actually, you can actually press them without having this uh, attached, which is kind of cool. Uh, da -da. So, yeah, this circuit board undoubtedly, I mean, even though there's cover here, um, and it's not covering chips, it's covering uh, metal shielding, which is then covering the chips, but this is undoubtedly the actual uh, phone circuitry. It's probably the processor and whatever chip they're using to connect. Uh, and here's another antenna, interestingly. It says RF right there for this. So this is definitely an antenna. Um, I'm not sure, this might be the cell antenna and that might be Bluetooth or vice versa. So a neat little package. I mean, like I said, the software on this phone, despite being uh, having 32 megs of RAM and a 32 meg ROM, that's tiny by today's standards, but the software was actually very usable and um, clearly well designed. And to my eye, this circuit board so far in the phone in general is well designed. So I'm pretty, uh, pretty impressed with this overall, despite not having too much of a use for it in my day-to-day -day life. Uh, these little side buttons are volume up, down, and call, uh, answer, and end. And those just kind of pop out there. And I should point out that those interface with these three discrete buttons here. So they kind of just sit on there and do their little button pressy thing. And also, I like any phone, or any device, I should say, that's easy to take apart and that you can actually put back together once you do take it apart, which this appears like it'll go back together no problem. Because um, it just snapped in, but I didn't have to break anything to unsnap it, which sometimes you do. And there's no welds or anything like that. So I just took out four screws, which I think is, yeah, I think there's another screw somewhere in there, because it's not, it's probably under this little guy here. I'm not sure what those contacts are for, actually, because there's this uh, multi-pin connector, and then a couple of, con oh, then those two, these two little contacts, wait, hang on, let me just move it closer to my face. I actually don't rightly know what that's for. It looks like there's two conductors going to this little pad, but they're bound together at the end and then they actually would rest on this little uh, metalized pad. So maybe that's so that it can detect whether this is against that. Uh, I'm really not sure. Maybe it's just part of the ground plane for the whole thing. But I believe there's another screw hiding under there and there's a bit of adhesive underneath. Is there another screw? Need a smaller screwdriver to pry that up nicely. Well, I'm kind of making a mess of it, but... Ah, yes, there is another screw under there. I should note, by the way, that the beginning part of this video was shot at 1080p. Uh, and this part of the video is shot in 4K. Um, if you have 4K capabilities, make sure YouTube is set to that, because you'll see a lot more detail here, although I'm showing some close-up photographs. Um, so the video is uploaded in 4K. The beginning, the quality might not look as nice, but now it should be a lot better. So anyway, those, uh, how many are there? Five little uh, chrome colored screws or what holds a plate on that lets this slide up and down. And you can see as it slides up and down, 
that little ribbon cable slides uh, with it. Of course, this part would be stable while this is moving, but either way. All right. And then we can see there's a, uh, it's actually missing a screw there. I didn't take that one out. Um, hmm, that's unfortunate. And that's near the bottom, so that would never be exposed when, the phone, when it's put together. Because this is the top part here, and it has two screws. So I never would have noticed that it's missing one there. Uh, it doesn't seem to really matter though. And I believe I may have lied to you earlier when I said that the bezel was made of plastic coated in metal. I don't, on second thought, I don't think it's metalized plastic. I think it might actually be metal. And this should pry apart from there. Yep. Okay. And there's the screen, obviously. And there is the other circuit board that's underneath the screen. Oh, wow. Okay, this is interesting. Um, there's a little connector holding this ribbon cable in. I don't know if it flips up or slides. I don't want to break it, but it looks like it is glued shut, actually. So... Yeah, breaking it maybe in the offing anyway. Because what I want to show you under here, well, I'll see if I can bend this up nicely, is that there's actually a chip. I'm assuming that's the display driver chip. Um, see, it's that little, I mean, I don't know if it's coming out well on camera here, but I'll show a close up of it. Uh, it's this little chip here. It's actually on, it's not on a circuit board, it's actually on this ribbon cable along with a couple of other discrete components. Looks like probably a diode and some resistors, maybe a capacitor. A little hard to tell, it's covered in plastic. So, what is, oh, and that's for the uh, touch screen, yeah. Yeah, that, that drives the capacitive touch screen. I'm sorry, I thought it was a display driver, but that's for the touch screen because it has uh, two, four, six, eight, nine pins, it looks like, going to this piece of glass. And then it returns to there and must eventually come down through this header to this ribbon cable and the connector to the phone. And of course, we got uh, the connections to the display there. And this little guy here is the speaker and it's just connected via two little uh, red and black wires. All right, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, I don't want to take it apart too much farther because I think pretty much got to the meat of it. You can see exactly what it's made out of. So, and besides, I can't take the screen off without desoldering this, which I'm not about to do because I would never ever get it back together. Um, my soldering skills aren't that great. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's what we have as far as major components and minor components. So when you combine that with the battery, well, the SIM card doesn't come with it, battery cover, and of course, where am I? Two halves of the watch band. That is the watch. So uh, that's kind of interesting. I, I really like the way this is put together and the way this is designed. Um, it may not be, and by the way, this is metal around the bezel. Oh, let me hold that up. Not plastic, so earns a mark for quality there too. Uh, and this entire sliding assembly is metal, very well put together. Like I said, that sliding action feels really good. Um, I'm a big fan of this watch. Like I said, not necessarily to use, but I'm just a big fan of whoever designed and engineered this. I'm guessing the design is probably quite a few years old, especially because it uses the full-size SIMs. Although that could be simply for compatibility in certain markets where they use full-size SIMs. Um, but yeah, uh, overall, very happy with that. The red watch, I have a feeling, is not going to be as impressively made. But uh, yeah, we'll see. In fact, I just noticed, and I haven't really abused this or done anything to it, but... Um, you can see here, this metal backer plate is flush with the, uh, with the plastic case there, but it's actually coming up on the end over here. 
So I think that's probably where, gonna, where I'm going to start prying, especially since there's no other obvious place. It does look like there might be a seam here along uh, towards the bottom of this plastic, but we shall see as I dig into it. So first things first, I'm going to try to get this band off, which will presumably work the same as the other watch. Oh, I'm getting my head in there again. Okay, so there we go. We got one side of the band. All right, the other side of the band. And I'm gonna go to a slightly thicker screwdriver so I don't bend my screwdriver all to hell. Oh, wow, that, that required no effort at all and it just pried up. This, is, this back is glued on though. You can see the glue sort of stretching between there. And I'm just gonna grab it. I'm probably gonna bend this back plate in the process. Ah, yep, bent it nicely. Oh, it's even marked the U80 on the back, so I guess that's, uh, is that, does that match what it said in the box? Yep, it said U80 on the box, and U80 on the back of the watch, so I guess that is the, if it's sold under different model numbers, that is the prime model number. So four screws on the back, those are going to come off, and <laughs> this isn't even a captive screw, but somehow it's captive on the top, and it's actually causing this to break open. That's... Yeah, this is definitely a lot cheaper. I mean, the difference between, again, this watch and the white watch was 20 bucks. But there's definitely, I can already tell, um, you're getting more for your money dollar for dollar with the white watch than this guy. Okay, this of course has a little, uh, I'm assuming that's some kind of lithium battery. I don't know whether it's lipo or lipo? Lithium polymer, I don't know. It's not labeled. I'm not gonna take it apart because I don't feel like starting a fire in my basement. Uh, yeah, and this circuit board just looks a lot more boring. Um, what is this module? Okay, um, this obviously, well not obviously, but I'm guessing that's the speaker. Although it, oh no, that's probably a vibrator. That's gonna be a vibrator. Um, and what is the rest of this? Okay, we'll get back to that in a moment. Um, under here, under this flap is the micro USB connector, so that's what this is right here. You can see this circuit board is not well aligned. It's, um, let me get this over here. There's more of a gap on this end between the side of the case and the board than there is on this end. I don't know if that's part of the design. Oh, it's also not mounted flat. Look, the circuit board's on an angle. It's coming up on this end, and it's down lower on this end towards the, uh, front of the watch. So like I said, yes, definitely n much less impressive than the white watch as far as design goes and the amount of effort put into it. Oh. What? Huh. Okay, I thought these were the two, these were the power leads from the micro USB connector, but this is not, that's not what this is. The US, those, that's separate from the USB connector. Um, it was glued onto the top of it because the USB connector, it's got solder joints going to the board there. Uh, don't know what this is. It's a button on the back of the watch. Oh, it's probably a reset button. I know, yeah. You know, that button there lines up with this hole. I wasn't sure what that hole was, honestly. I didn't really look at the manual. Um, not really that kind of guy. So yeah, that's... Uh, probably a reset button. I can't imagine what else they would put underneath a tiny little hole in the back of the watch. Also completely ruins any kind of like water resistance this might have because the USB uh, connector is covered with a flap. Um, the speaker actually has a rubber grommet around it, which I guess if it created a good enough seal to the front of this, it could be water resistant at least. Maybe this is the speaker and I was wrong and that is a microphone. Because it did talk about talk time. So you know what, we'll call this a microphone then, and this a speaker, and this a vibrator. I'm almost certain about that. Yeah, because that makes perfect sense. Microphone, speaker coming out two holes in the side. Uh, this would not be very water resistant though. But anyway, um, I don't like the hole in the back regardless, because if you were sweating a lot, uh, your sweat could just wick right up through that and uh, get into the back of this thing. 
I guess it depends how much you sweat, how much of an animal you are. I'm actually sweating right now, so don't take offense to that. Um, even though you hear a lot of background noise on some of these videos, I mean, that's because I got all these, uh, which shoulder are they behind? This, this shoulder. There's a lot of servers behind my shoulder there, and they're all running right now. Uh, usually I have an air conditioner running to cool this, but I turn the air conditioner off to make the video, so it's probably like 85 degrees Fahrenheit down here, uh, which is some amount of Celsius for normal people who use the metric system. Okay, the board is not even glued down, it was just sort of floating in there. I guess that's why I was on an angle, because there's nothing to secure it in place. Um, you can see it just sort of comes up. The only thing keeping it from coming up completely is this little ribbon cable that goes from the board around this, through this little hole there, and to the screen in front. And the screen, I'm going to guess, just will pry out of here. Yep, oh. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, I'm gonna break this. I know I'm gonna break, oh, okay. Oh, again, that is, I'll have to check if that's the identical chip, but that is, again, the uh, touchscreen uh, processor, whatever the hell it's called, um, the touchscreen driver, because the display is now loose from the front of the watch. Here's the glass in the front. There's the display itself, and whoops. And this little ribbon cable here is going to the uh, glass, not to the display. Uh, just like the other watch, the display has this header just soldered on. That is a real messy soldering job though on that header. Uh, kind of gross actually. Not a very good soldering job on these pins either. Looks like some solder just accidentally leaked out over there. This uh, is just for the button on the side that turns it on and off. This little uh, dealy here, when it's all put together, it would line up with this button here. So wow, we got a, uh, it's quite a catastrophe of dangling parts. Now the glass is almost certainly gonna be glued onto the front and this cable is gonna be connected. Now this watch, like I said, I didn't take it apart completely, but this did have a detachable uh, header or a detachable connector on the white watch which could be, uh, if it wasn't glued shut, it could just be pushed aside and this would separate nicely. Whereas this offers no such luxury for repair or disassembly in that there's no connector. Uh, it's just, oh, oh wait, nope. I'm lying again, there's a connector. Okay, it's actually incredibly similar in design. Does this just push in? Is this just friction fit? Well, anyway, okay, never mind. I was lying, I, I apologize for that. Is this exactly the same arrangement? by the way, um, if we, no, it's got a slightly different uh, configuration. So there we have the front display, or the front touchscreen uh, and bezel. And here we have all the circuitry, all kind of one big fat thing. Uh, in theory, if this, oh wow, I get, why is it the whole thing magnetic? Okay, this is definitely the speaker because it's magnetic. Um, uh, I don't know if this has batteries. It'd be nice to power this on. I like powering stuff on when it's all disassembled like this. Even though I won't be able to control it because of the lack of touch screen. All right, well, I grabbed a power connector, which is connected to the Orico USB power supply that I reviewed in a different video. And let's see if it'll power on just being plugged in without a charge. Nah, I think it requires a charge on the battery. Oh, well, that would have been cool. Well, I couldn't resist, so I gave it one more shot, and this is the best I could get. Uh, I charged it for about half an hour, and uh, all I could get to do was show the charging icon. Now, I did notice right where my index finger is there, it was getting really warm. And uh, I decided to measure it, and I was getting as high as 125 degrees Fahrenheit over uh, to the right of the chip. Now, that doesn't appear to be where the charge circuitry is, so I'm not sure why that's getting so hot, but there you go. All right, and so that is what's inside. I'm just gonna mix up all these parts, who cares, right? Yeah, just shit, man. Just mix together all those screws. So there we go. That is uh, two smartwatches from China. Uh, well, one which is really more of a telephone. All right, well, thanks for, 
All right, well, that's it for this uh, episode of Let's Open. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. Um, if you didn't enjoy it, I guess don't. If you have any questions or concerns, uh, please write them in the comments below. Uh, if you want more on this or any other thing, check out my blog at s.co.tt. I occasionally do update uh, the posts on these things with more information as it comes up. Uh, and thanks for watching. Uh.